So here we are, Chip and Andy, on the June 19th uh, company update webinar, open to the whole company, uh, questions, answers, hopefully, maybe some I don't knows and some maybes. But um, so uh, luckily, once again, we have a whole lot of, not a lot going on. So we probably don't need to burn up the whole hour. Uh, but we are going to uh, cover some of the basic stuff and then a couple little tidbits here and there that we've been learning on the um, the VMPP call and the, uh, what's the other one, Virginia Access call. Um, but uh, as we probably should do uh, once again, we have, to my knowledge, nobody has told me about any coronavirus infections with our customers nor our staff um, in a long time. Like no, no customers at all, and only one staff person so far that I know of, and they have recovered. So uh, huge thanks to the team, the DSPs, the sponsors, uh, the administrative team behind the, behind the scenes helping to keep this company healthy and safe. Um, I would have bet money against this. I mean, it just, this virus is nasty and it is spreading through our communities around the world and SSBA has completely uh, outperformed my expectations on staying healthy and safe during this. So I really, really appreciate everybody for um, keeping vigilant. Now that it's nice outside and beaches are open and the governor's saying go back to licking doorknobs, um, not really, I'm just kidding. But, uh, but I, I, Andy and I both would really appreciate if everybody would stay vigilant you know, don't get into crowds, don't go to concerts and mosh pits, um, you know, be safe, uh, wash your hands, wear a mask if you're in, in close proximity to people, stay vigilant because just because it seems like the world's getting better, this virus is still out there, it's still dangerous. Um, and and I, I don't want to see anybody get hurt with this thing, whether it be staff, customer, sponsors, etc. cetera. So, um, one of the one of the really good things, um, you know, from the VNPP call this morning was that in general, um, our community is doing very well, and so I think um, other providers also and, and DSPs that work across programs are, are working really hard to stay safe, and Virginia in general is doing well. Our um, openings are coming a little bit slower than other states, and I think that people in general here are being more mindful, and so we're seeing our numbers actually um, steady or start to go down as opposed to other states that have maybe rushed into things. So, so what we're learning is that the taking care works, and so um, it's it's been a long time. It's been about a hundred days, and you know we're still wearing masks and washing our hands and keeping social distance, and it can. Um, they're actually talking about um, the fatigue that comes with this. You know, there comes this point where it's like, okay, I've been doing this a long time and nothing's happened. Do I really need to keep doing it? And, and you know, we just kind of think in the perspective of, as we do with when we're working with somebody on a behavioral plan that's working and um, they're doing really well and they're doing really well because the behavioral plan is working. When we begin to pull back on it, we begin to see an increase in behavior. I think it's that same kind of concept. So, um, so we, you know, it, it's, it's difficult to kind of keep, uh, keep vigilant about it, but um, it's working and that's really positive. And so, um, you know, even if you're not doing it for yourself, do it for your loved ones. So, um, and we thank you. We thank you because we know it's not easy. I think that the, the thing that, that is, is, I don't know, in, in my mind that's most concerning to me is uh, I absolutely love this little place down the road called Margarita Grill that sells tacos and it's cheap and I know everybody and the waitresses know me and the owners know me and I can't go there because it's a lot of people in a small confined space talking, hugging, fist bumping, whatever. And I'm just like, I can't go. I, they don't have outdoor seating. Um, and, and for me, that's what I'm giving up. That's my, I, I don't mind being alone at work. I, I go out and play outdoors all the time. That's the only thing that I am like, God, I wish I could go there and I don't. Mm -hmm. So that's what I would ask each of you is, it, it, it might be your church, it might be your restaurant or your concert or the, your friends going to the beach, but it's the confined spaces, lots of people talking with not a lot of ventilation. Um, yeah. And that, that's where uh, we all have to make our little sacrifices. Mine's Margarita Grill, again, yours might be your church or your nightclub or wherever you hang out with your friends. 
Um, but please stay vigilant. Pick outdoor seating when you want to go to a restaurant and that type of thing. Make that sacrifice. Stay safe. Um, okay. So one, speaking, um, one oh, positive. Yeah. One positive is um, if you all, I, I posted it on our Facebook page um, on the Today Show, I think it was about two days ago, um, they actually ran a story and it was um, in, I believe it was in Massachusetts, but they were focusing on group homes and um, they, it was fo focused on parents with adult children um, with disabilities and, and the, the choices they're making. Do they stay in the group home? Do they take them home? The difficulties with not being able to visit. And so it was an interesting story, but what grabbed my attention was all of the reporters were saying, we had no idea that this was a thing, you know, we just didn't know. And holy cow, DSPs should get paid so much more than they do. Um, and they were shocked at that. And so it was a real positive, particularly in these times that, hey, there's a national story now where they were talking about the work that you do and the fact that the work you do is so important and should be paid more. So, um, so it was um, inspiring. Hopefully that will, uh, that will get a little bit of attention. Maybe it'll be a ripple that'll start a wave of attention. So thank you for what you're doing. Yes, absolutely. Um, and, uh, oh, okay. So let's get into this. Let's put coronavirus to bed and then we'll, we'll move on to other things. Uh, let me do a quick screen share. Um, just, and I'm not going to get into my charts right now. The, uh, the people who I was so frustrated with before have now done a little better job of actually just not making 101 level errors on their reporting. Uh, so if you guys remember the, the cone now, the cone looks like it should, like a hurricane, right? We know where it's going to be in the next hour. We don't know three days from now. So the cone gets larger as time goes on. They had the cone backwards. I was like, these people need to be fired. But right now they're getting better. Um, and so here's our Virginia numbers. This is like kind of the death. So we were on that really steep rise and the curve is slowly bending to the right. And if you notice towards the end, it's starting to bend back up. So I think everybody expects cold weather when it comes back, this thing is going to come back as well. It's very unlikely, virtually impossible to have a vaccine before next year. Right, so we're gonna go through the winter with this corona thing. Um, and and it, it just so put it out of your head that there's gonna be a vaccine and everybody's gonna have it. And Christmas is gonna be 25 people in your house around the table all sharing food and utensils. That's just not gonna happen. But whatever, we're making a lot of progress. And so we can kind of take a breath, like the summer's gonna burn this thing off a little bit and we can get outdoors and enjoy ourselves as long as you stay vigilant. <laughs> Uh, here's the deaths. Uh, again, the peak was back there in May. That was basically the worst of the worst, and it's going down. But as you notice, October comes around, it's going to start curving back up again. So that's when we're going to have to be really, really vigilant there. But um, for the foreseeable future, this is going to be better and better and better. Hospitals are getting caught up. I mean, hospitals actually are like, they're, they're broke now. Like, they want people to come back and get elective surgeries, like Botox or whatever the heck is an elective surgery so that they can actually make money. Because like before it was like, you, we didn't want anybody in the hospitals unless you had coronavirus back here. Or let's go, let's go over here, the, this, the hospital resource use. Um, this is the ICU beds. Back here when the ICU beds were all taken up, it was like all hands on deck, right? That was scary. Now we're down to here, where if you look at the hospital resources, like there's just, you know, they're just, they're down to nothing. So good news is if you or a loved one get this darn thing, the hospitals can keep up, right? They're, they're not as stressed as they were back in the old days. Now, Jennifer's probably gonna dial in and say, no way, it's still <laughs> stressful, but who knows, maybe if she, she can correct me, she's much more closer to that than I am. So um, let me see on here, uh, this is the, the social distancing stuff. It's obvious like we're starting to creep back up. People are like, for a while there, we're all scared to death and you know we wouldn't go to the grocery store and we, we hoarded truckloads of toilet paper because of obviously in Armageddon you need that. Um, so now we're, we're coming back and, and, and it looks like people are, are coming back to normal according to this prediction in October, which is why it's a little scary is that people are tired and they want to go back to Margarita Grill and talk to their friends and then the virus comes back. So, um, so we, 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 I would rather not see this happen, but this is what they're assuming is gonna happen according to these charts. So either way, um, for right now, this is mostly good news. Um, 
but it doesn't mean we should change our behavior. In this company, we need to assume that this thing is still bad and it's still gonna hurt us. Um, so another thing, I, I guess what I wanna do is start really broad and then we'll narrow it down into nitty gritty SSVA stuff. Um, and, and Andy, I know, yeah, this is probably affecting you and I didn't talk to you about this before the call, but um, I am feeling like, I wouldn't say frustrated, which is what we say in Virginia or in, in SSBA, but like the news is horrible right now. And every time I watch it, it's depressing and it doesn't matter what it is. It just seems like there's this constant news flow of negativity. And so I personally had to turn it off for a while just because like, I want to be positive from time to time. I want to keep up with current events, but uh, I think it's important for everybody. Like if, if what's in the news is bringing you down, take some time to um, look at positive stuff because it, it can, if, if you don't get out of that and, and, and realize that there are some good things happening in the world. Um, so what I do whenever I'm not feeling so good about the world is I, watch somebody that I have a complete bromance with, which is Elon Musk. This guy is absolutely our current Thomas Edison. He's inspirational. I mean, they just sent men up to the space station on a commercial space flight, and I watched that for like eight hours straight. And it, and it kind of gets you reset, right? Of like, yes, there's some pockets of the world that suck, and, and we need to fight and, and, and do that. But, uh, but there's also some really cool stuff. So I would advocate to everybody is sometimes turn off the, 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 the if it bleeds, it leads. And, and you have to actively search for something positive, something inspirational, something that, that brings you joy. Um, for me, it's Elon. For you, it might be somebody else. But just take time to, to, to do that. Um, just, just so, uh, you know, we, we don't want to be depressed on purpose, I guess. And, um, and, and let's wrap that into the customer's lives. It, it, yeah. If you are depressed, your, your, your depression is going to move over to that customer, your anxiety or whatever it is, the negative mm -hmm. feeling. It's going gonna, it's gonna to bleed over to the customers. So I think it's important that we go to work, we come to work positive, saying, hey, what are we going to go do today that's awesome? The weather's beautiful. Let's go out and do this. Um, you know, we don't have to think about what's happening in Britain or wherever, where something bad happened. So I don't know, Andy, do you, I don't know, do you have any? Yeah, that was very, uh, very psychological of you, Chip. That is quite amazing. And you even used a feeling word. Um, so good for you. Um, absolutely. The, uh, um, you know, mental health issues are, of course, on the rise during this time. Um, it's a time when people are experiencing separation and loss, so there's, there's natural grief responses going on. And there's also the stress, so there's some anxiety people, you know, that's going on. So when you think of the bell curve, when you take the crisis training and you think, you know, mental, mental health is never 100%. We always kind of fluctuate between. This is pushing everything up just a little bit. So self-care is really important. And um, I agree that, um, I, I don't know whether it's because we're, we're home a little bit more that the news seems to be on more, but I also go on these news fasts because I think it's very important. And so, so you have to find the things that bring you joy and that, that, um, that you're able to um, focus on or do that will um, take you into a space of, 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 uh, of a little bit more happiness. And so whatever that is, you know, um, course it's always better to find healthy options as opposed to self-medicating options you know but of you know anything taking a walk or um, petting the dog or reading a book or you know um, working on arts and crafts we did a k-day which um, was um, fantastic it was a wonderful way to zoom and connect with a lot of people and so I think hopefully we're all getting out and reaching out and, and connecting with people and we played bingo which was a lot of fun um, so um, I know that I'm doing weekly uh, cooking um, with the recipe group, which is something kind of different, but I'm really enjoying it. So, so wherever that you can find joy, when all else fails, every day just find something that you're grateful for. Um, if you have a perspective of gratitude, it's a lot easier to find joy. So you know, anything that you're able to find um, joy with or find gratitude with is important. Um, Camille mentioned Optima EAP is also a resource. So again, you know, we have that bell curve of, of mental health and sometimes stress can push, push us up to where um, it's a little bit more difficult to maintain. And that's when you want to reach out for, for um, help when it's beginning to interfere with your daily functioning. So if you're finding it's difficult to get out of bed, you're not wanting to go to work, you're isolating those kind of things, um, then, you know, there's a lot of options out there. And 
um, Optima EAP is completely confidential and you can have three free sessions for you or any of your family members um, and or you could I imagine combine um, and they can also make referrals out. So um, you're not alone. Um, there's a lot of people out here. So reach out and get some help. And, and speaking of the and you don't have to love Elon Musk, but it's really funny. We learned something new about Chip that he's got a boy crush. My feeling <laughs> word was bromance, right? Bromance, um, yes. yeah. Well, uh, it, not to get on a rabbit hole, but like he does solar panels, he shoots off rockets, uh, he's got the car company, he's got Neuralink, that's a little thing in the back of your ear that's going to connect your brain to your cell phone and your computer. Um, I mean, this he's got the boring company, which is making underground highways for cars to get around traffic in LA. I mean, it's like, how this dude is like pushing the limits on every boundary and he's just an amazing dude so and why, he should YouTube, never try to dance oh and he no 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 he does not a dance he should guy. never no, no, try no, no, to no. dance he's like all he up here he's not dance. anything below the neck he's not that good at he doesn't yeah. exercise or anything so either way uh, another thing that's real interesting and we move on to, to more stuff uh, you, the, the, the thing I noticed, I, when I went on my news fast, I, and, and I was like, but I got to consume information from somewhere. And I'm kind of interested in the rest of the world. And not just because a lot of times the United States is like, oh, we are the world. Well, not really. There's a lot of cool stuff out there. So I've personally been going to Al Jazeera, which is a Middle Eastern news source. Um, and the stuff they cover is fascinating, like just weird things happening in weird countries that you don't even know where they are, but they cover it because it's interesting to them. It's not interesting to the United States. So uh, if you want to know what's happening on the border of North and South Korea or, or in Africa, some countries having a problem or Lebanon, and they, they just cover stuff that is just people in the United States don't even have any interest in. So our news stations don't cover it. Um, I, I know I love it. It's neat seeing that perspective, but whatever, we can move on. Um, okay, so uh, let's see. Oh, so another big one, which I really appreciate everybody's help. It's, uh, I'm sure Andy and the team, uh, uh, or Andy appreciates the team as well, is our licensing triennial review just occurred. This happens every three years, which is why it's triennial, primarily because we're a good company. We know, how, know what we're doing. Uh, bad companies have it happen every year. But the, 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 if you're doing really, really well, it happens every three years because they basically trust you not to mess things up. And um, so the, the team came together. Oh, that's the other thing. That normally licensing shows up at the office and asks you for stuff and talks to you. In this situation, my understanding is it's a kind of a desk audit. Because licensing is scared to come out of their office, as they probably should be. Um, and so we have to collect everything and send it in, which was quite different and quite frustrating. And so I really appreciate everybody that put in the hard work to find stuff, scan stuff, upload stuff. Uh, you know, all, all of that is it, it different and, and it took a lot of effort on a lot of people to work together to make that happen. And so we got it in on time and yeah, there were some gaps and like usually, uh, oh, Jean watches, listens to Al Jazeera as well. That's one of her favorites. Good. See, I should have asked her first, right? And then I wouldn't have had to find it myself. But, um, but either way, it sounds like we did pretty good, but we did, as usual, every time we have a Medicaid audit or a licensing audit, we do find some little holes, little gaps, little like, damn it, we know better, why did we do that? And so uh, over the near future, we're gonna be trying to put some systems and processes in place to do some uh, kind of, I would, I would like random sampling, periodic audits of things like the custom records, the HR records, even the finance records, because sometimes like, oops, we forgot this guy and his copay or whatever. So we're trying to build some additional capacity so that we're doing little tiny spot checks that are not as big of a deal. And that way we, we don't kind of find ourselves with our pants down when licensing shows up. But either way, I think overall we did good. Andy, is that, you know? Yeah, I, everything has been sent off. Of course, it could take a while to hear back. And, and you know, it's interesting because our triennial license is coinciding with licensing's uh, sprint to try to catch up with what the DOJ is asking of them. So they, even if we weren't going through our triennial, we would still be being asked for a bunch of stuff because they have to present that for the DOJ. So, um, so it's kind of two, two birds, one stone kind of thing. Um, again, so grateful that things are electronic. It made it so much easier than if we had to go and dig through uh, papers like we used to and like probably some agencies are. 
Um, and again, it, it did um, highlight some areas where we're still not quite up to speed, but I know people have been working diligently to get stuff scanned and get stuff uploaded so that we are um, completely digital with all of this stuff. Um, you know, most of the stuff that we're looking at is from an administrative perspective, you know, the direct support professionals and stuff um, have been keeping up on their responsibilities and duties. So that's not, that's not an area of concern. So, um, so yeah, it went, it went well. I will we'll know more when we eventually hear something, but I was really pleased with how well the team worked together, um, working on getting stuff together and, and getting stuff uploaded as a group. So um, thank you all. Yep. So speaking of DOJ, that was actually my next topic. Um, the, there is a landslide of administrative bull crap that is flowing into our field. Uh, which this is kind of like the, the intent was good. Like, hey, let's get people out of institutions and give them a good life in the community. And Virginia wasn't so good at that back in 2005. Uh, I'm sorry, it was uh, 2012, I think, is when we really started getting wrecked. But, um, but uh, so DOJ got involved and spanked Virginia and, you know, and got us on track. Um, but as we're coming to the end of, um, of the DOJ settlement agreement, all this stuff, which was a 10 year thing, Virginia is behind on a lot of options. And so, uh, Donald Fletcher, which is the, uh, independent reviewer has kind of intensified his requests, uh, or expectations, probably a better word. And, and Virginia is like scrambling, trying to satisfy his his concerns and in that way at some point we can get ourselves out of this thing um, so how this manifests itself uh, I completely disagree with I think it's a bunch of horse crap but they basically think if there's a lot more administration behind the scenes measuring documenting reviewing reporting that somehow that's going to improve the lives of the customer and I continue to say almost on every call is like, until we increase the pay of our DSPs, our sponsors, the people who are day to day working with the customers, until that happens, our quality ain't gonna go anywhere. It doesn't matter how many admins you have or how many CSB visits there's gonna be. But uh, I just wanted to let you guys know, there's gonna be a lot more people asking questions and documentation and all of this. And some reason they think that this is gonna improve the lives of customers, which is malarkey. The CSBs are getting the brunt of this. It's not, and I'm, I'm talking about our whole field. I'm not talking about just SSVA. Uh, the CSBs are basically going to be required to do the job of licensing. I mean, every quarter they're going to come in like a licensing uh, rep and ask you all kinds of questions about your group home or your sponsored home. Um, and and it, they're, they're already overwhelmed. And now all of a sudden the, the case management has to do all this additional work. So just be prepared for that. Be prepared that if you ask your case manager for something, they're they're overwhelmed. They're probably going to quit. I mean, some people are going to their their turnover is going to increase. Is what I'm getting at. They're going to have a harder time hiring. They're just asking them to do too much, um, and it, and it's sad. I mean, it, it it for us to be for us to thrive, we need a good case management system. Because case managers need to be thinking about what can we do to improve the life of the customer, not is your water heater at the correct temperature, or, you know, blah, blah, blah. But so either way, be prepared to get asked a lot of questions. Um, be empathetic with your case manager if they are not maybe quick to respond to your email or whatever. Um, of course, like with, with Heidi and the, and the team that are putting th things through WAMS, this additional scrutiny on the CSBs and additional requirements is probably going to make that harder. And so I would ask everybody that's in charge of doing ISPs and stuff, let's make sure it gets right it get, gets done right the first time. It gets submitted earlier than later so that Heidi can try to get it through the case management, through that system without a lot of pain, bounce back and forth because of pended stuff. Because the, see, it, we, we don't have time to do things twice. It needs to go through right on the first try. And it's not fair to the case management that we got to go around and around because we didn't submit the documentation correctly. So I just ask everybody to work together on that and be empathetic. And just another another thing, and I, I Jennifer Fedora said this this morning on on the call, which I loved. Um, and and again, I, I don't know exactly how she phrased it, but basically, if it's not written in policy, it's not real, yeah. um, or if, you know, if it's not in the regulations, it's not real. So you're also 
going to be working with a lot of people who are interpreting memos and documents and this huge influx of information. And so I would, I would advise if you hear something that you haven't heard before, it doesn't sound right, you know, the response is always, let me look into that, let me find out, as opposed to, oh, absolutely, let me change how we do things because you're asking me to do this. Um, because we want to make sure that systemically we're, we're adhering to what the regulations say. So um, it could be an interpretational stuff. A lot of these things that are coming out are suggestions and they're really wide open to interpretation. Um, and so we want to make sure that we're not changing things that are working because of a misunderstanding. Um, but we also um, want to make sure that we're, um, you know, respectful and, and compassionate to the case managers who are going to be feel, feeling overwhelmed. So, yeah. um, gosh, yes, I don't know. Let me find out is, is always a really good answer. So, and yeah. then, then ask. Yep. Uh, let's see. So let's move on to, I guess we're, we're, we're to the high level Virginia stuff. Uh, so, and the last time we talked about retainer payments, which, uh, <laughs> It was funny, Jennifer, on the call today, Jennifer basically said, we, we all owe our fiscal team flowers or a bouquet of flowers because the frustrating dumpster fire that is DMAS Medicaid retainer payments is, is very frustrating. Uh, they, they made some errors. They had to pay some money and then pull it back and pay it back. And it's just, it's a, it's just a big mess. And Andrea and Dana and the team there are trying to sort that out so so be empathetic with them <laughs> as well because they are uh the good news on the retainer payments is it, it basically what a retainer payment is for those of you that don't know it's when all the day supports had to be shut down on march they, they, we shut ours down march 16th some of them negligently waited a little longer but eventually most congregate type day support settings got closed um they they realized we still have bills to pay. We still have bands that, that, that have a lease. We still have a building that has a, a lease. We can't get out of that. And so, um, so retainer payments, they pay us a portion of what we would have billed so that we can continue to pay those, um, those back office type costs that didn't go away when we shut down. Um, but the good news is uh, there, there was some extra, basically it, it's replacing the loss that we had when we shut down um, day support. So it, it does give us a little bit of additional cash. Um, it, it, it's not uh, forever cash. It's like a little bit of cash until the retainer, the retainer payments stop and then we're back to being perpetually broke. But given that there was some extra cash, we were able to put a little something something in everybody's paycheck this month, um, or, or let's say in this paycheck, but it's for a month worth of basically it's, um, what we didn't want to do is get people kind of used to getting it like it's a raise. It's not a raise. It's like, we got a little extra money from the state. We're giving you guys a little extra money. Um, and we're going to keep that going as much as we can each month. We're going to take a look at it and, and say, do we, how much can we afford or whatever? But what I would like to do, I think Andy's in agreement, is we're trying to get people um, each month, so it's every other paycheck, something in your check saying, thank you. This COVID thing's a pain in our ass. We appreciate you. We know you're busting your tail and this is frustrating, but thank you because everybody in this company has come together to, to really help us thrive in this, even though a lot of other companies out there are having problems. And so, um, so we're going to keep that going uh, uh, as long as we can, um, but just don't get used to it. It, it, it. This is a weird thing. It's the state giving us some money that they could change their mind tomorrow and then that extra money is not there. Um, but I don't know. So we're, we're going to do the best we can. So, but basically be prepared. I'm going to try, I, I can't, you know, with, with the state, I can't guarantee anything because they could change their mind tomorrow. But I, I think now, I think we can basically count on this through August. So I'm going to try to make sure every other paycheck, there's something in there extra for the W-2 employees because it is related specifically to day support. Um, for the W-2 employees, I'm gonna try to put something in there every other paycheck. Um, might be one time a little high, one time maybe a little low, but a little something, something every time. And then we'll reassess it in August if we can continue that. But um, we're just trying to share and, and say thank you. I wish they would give us something extra for sponsors as well, because I know the sponsors have been squeaky clean on this whole thing with Corona. They're doing a great job as well. Um, I, wish, I wish the state would give us something to say thank you for the sponsors. But since sponsor didn't get shut down, they're assuming, oh, well, everything's sponsored, it's fine. 
Um, and, and of course, all of the raises that they had in the budget were put on hold mm -hmm. uh, until Virginia figures out uh, how are the revenues going to be, meaning taxes. So when restaurants start reopening and all of that, which we are, Virginia is on a better path than we thought. We're a little bit shielded from um, this, you know, basically this is the Great Depression. This is worse than the Great Depression when it comes down to unemployment and, um, and ec economic shutting down. So, um, but, but Virginia is doing better for the same reason why we did better in, in the 2007 Great Recession financial crisis, which is the Department of Defense is in our backyard. So that money didn't dry up and all of those contractors related to that. And we have Northern Virginia. Um, and obviously they have, <laughs> they're, they're printing money as fast as they can and, and all of that. And so we've got those two things that shield Virginia from what a lot of other states are going through. Um, cuts are not off the table though. Um, so we, they, they, they basically, raises got taken off the table and set aside and said, we're not going to do that until the economy comes back, but cuts are still on the table. Um, and so we, we as a company and, and all companies like us need to be prepared that at some point they could say, look, we need to cut the group home rate 5% or we need to cut the sponsored rate 5%. That's still on the table. So, um, so I guess what, what I would recommend everybody do is save your money, pay down your debt. And, and if we get through this thing with no cuts, then yay, whatever, you'd be pleasantly surprised, but, but be prepared things could get worse if the economy can't open back up revenues don't go back up, the state has to have a balanced budget, Medicaid's gonna get cuts, okay? So that just, just keep that in mind. The summertime is gonna be easy, it's when we get back into the winter is when those type of bad things might happen. Okay, um, talked about that, da, 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 da. day support. And Andy, I'll let you take the lead on that. Uh, if, sure. if you wanna give us an update on how day support's doing on our graduates? Sure. So it, we, we've been meeting every two weeks to talk about day support and plans for potentially reopening. And of course, it's a really um, challenging uh, scenario because we really don't know the right answers. Um, we want to keep everybody safe, but we also want to offer opportunities for people who are ready to come back. Um, the retainer payments for day support at this point run through the 30th of June. So we kind of put anything on hold until then. And... Um, and of course, um, you know, we're also waiting to get to see what level three opening looks like in Virginia um, and, and what, what would be allowable at that point. Um, we are probably looking at beginning to, in Hampton Roads, bring people back in on some sort of scale um, starting in July. Um, we have customers who uh, receive day support programming who um, have been uh, you know, asking Cassie and, and, you know, they've been doing regular check-ins. So um, with Cassie and Renee and, and, and the people that they're speaking to are anxious to come back. Good. And so I think one of the things we'll really look at is who's interested in coming back and then also who is at low risk. And so, you know, probably looking at the people that are at higher risk, um, putting the, uh, a hold on that. Although they're probably not the people who are asking to come back right away. Um, but hopefully we'll be able to get some sort of day support going um, on a small scale. So you look at Hampton Roads was um, about 50 customers, I think. Um, you know, of those, maybe a third might be coming back right away and, and, and we'd be looking at how that would look. But we would also wanna think about how do we do small groups? Um, how do we keep social isolation? What about um, masks? Uh, social distancing, excuse me, not isolation. What about masks? Um, I know hi, uh, Cassie and um, John Bass from operations have been going through the building and we're looking at things like, um, you know, uh, how boundaries to keep people separated and uh, automatic faucets so you don't have to touch the faucet and stuff like that. So, um, so we're working on that and hopefully in July we'll begin to see um, things open. Now one of the challenges of course is finding staff to come back to work and um, again we're running into this difficulty that the staff that are being called back to work aren't necessarily wanting to come back to work because they're receiving unemployment still and um, I actually saw in the news this morning that um, Virginia unemployment is really beginning to look at that, that um, there's a lot of people that aren't wanting to go back to work once things are beginning to open. And so, um, so that might not be an option, you know, that people, um, if there is a job available, you know, 
it will be important to come back to work. So, um, so if you know people who are looking for work or you know people who were working here and, and got furloughed and, you know, maybe kind of give them the heads up that it's, uh, we're getting ready to open up and we're hoping to bring people on to do a little bit of shadowing, um, you know, a couple weeks or so before we actually open up the day program. Um, as far as um, what the model will look like, um, I don't think that we will be, you know, we, we were doing a lot of community engagement and community engagement is going to be high risk activities. So we'll also be looking at um, what are the safe things that we can do in the community. So we don't have to be in the center all the time, but we're also safe while being in the community. And all of the people that we support will have an added on skill building or, or safety support that'll address the COVID stuff so that we can continue with that education and stuff. So, but I'm excited. I know there's a lot of people that are anxious to get back in. Yep. Um, we will continue to support the people um, we support in group homes in the group home, um, doing group day in the group home for now, um, so that we can really focus on the people who um, maybe have been stuck at home um, with families or in group homes and are really looking to get out that haven't had the contact with us. So, um, so the wheels are rolling. Um, Danville is looking at doing some... Um, community type stuff on a small scale. They haven't had quite as much interest in people returning just yet um, because that, again, that is the factor is how safe do um, individuals feel in coming back, but they'll also be rolling out in a small scale. And, and the Eastern Shore has continued to do a little bit of this and that. Um, they do it on a very small basis and they have so much outside space and, and place that they can go where there's not a lot of people around that they've been really successful at doing that. So, um, so it's exciting. I know everybody's ready to um, get back. Um, the other thing, um, um, Brianna, um, who is uh, QIDP and uh, site service coordinator day program had been helping out Lynchburg during this uh, this closure and and I know Lynchburg has been really pleased to have that help as their QIDP out there Jordan went out and had a brand new baby so congratulations I don't think she's on here but congratulations to Jordan um, Jordan is getting ready to come back on in the beginning of July, which is perfect timing. So then Brianna will be able to transition back to Hampton Roads to help out with day support. So things are working really well um, as far as timing with that. So that doesn't always happen. So we're really grateful for that. Um, also wanted to welcome back Bonnie. Bonnie is back, um, our, our uh, office receptionist in Hampton Roads. So I don't know if she made it on the call or not. But, uh, One of my favorite people, so I'm super glad that she's back and she'll be working back part-time. And, and also um, taking the responsibility of checking people in and making sure that they're healthy before they come into a building. So, um, you know, there'll be signs on the doors that will be asking questions and using hand sanitizer and stuff like that um, to check people before they come in. So um, that's a positive thing. So um, welcome back to Bonnie also. And... Um, and we also have somebody who's leaving us. Yes, moving. Yeah. We didn't authorize this. I know. I'm, I I don't think that call. I like this Veronica. very much. But um, um, those of you yeah. who know Veronica, who um, does account payable, um, is where I'm gonna make her talk. Is you she on here? Talk? Oh yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna allow. Veronica, you, to you have to explain her. why are you leaving? Yes, tell us what's yeah. going on here. Why are you leaving us? <laughs> oh my so, goodness unexpected um <laughs> i'm leaving because my fiance found a job in the north virginia maryland area oh okay congratulations so it's leaving for a relocation can't take you guys with me i would love to i don't think that's possible uh, you can still come to lunches and our happy hours on zoom and all of that so yeah yes yeah absolutely and when are you leaving veronica um we are packing up by the end of this month heading out my goodness are you have you have you lived up there before or been up there before or is this a yes. big new adventure i've lived up there before for a little bit i'm a, ner a little nervous about the hills i never care for how hilly the roads are and the deer nice well, we are sure going to miss you. We, you. It has been such a pleasure to work with you. Um, I, uh, I, you, you um, are consistently positive and you just, you come in, you get stuff done and you've always um, 
you know, always in a real good space. We'll meet seeing your son, seeing your son around too. So um, we enjoyed <laughs> having him come in and watching him grow. And um, so, yeah, I hope that you will keep attention. Yeah, I'm huh? definitely going to try to keep in contact with you guys and I'm going to miss you guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's definitely, you know that we do remote work, right? I just... <laughs> <laughs> Out there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah so we we wish you well it's it's how long have you been with us veronica um it would have been five years come october isn't that great yeah we we have you've really been a joy in the office i haven't got to see you as much um just lately but i'll make sure i get in next week to see you <laughs> before you leave so uh, so yes we will all miss you and i'm I, i'm sure that um that we'll do some sort of send off and um Thank you, Veronica, for all that you've done for us. You kept the lights on, kept the bills paid, and and chased Chip and I down for our signatures yep. and credit card bills. So you stayed <laughs> honest. Thank you. Yep. No problem. Thank you for the opportunity to work with you all. Cool. All right. I guess that, so everybody, that what that means is we, we will be posting a position for um, the fiscal office for primarily uh, all kinds of stuff account veronica did a little bit of everything but like managing the customer money through chateau and paying bills and uh, chasing people down for concur receipts and all of that so uh we're going to be posting that but it is a very specific position we're looking for people that do have accounting experience it's extremely detailed stuff it's uh, a lot of excel uh, databases, uh, all that. But, um, but anyway, if anybody knows anybody that is looking for a position in accounting, we are going to have that posted probably to Indeed and all of that. If you have somebody that's interested, shoot them over to Tanisha. I think she's the lead on getting all of that posted. And then uh, Andrea and the team will be doing an interview soon. So, well, cool. Um, let me find my little list of talking points. We are at 11.42, moving right along. Uh, let's see. Um, I, I still would suggest Everybody that is in an administrative capacity, at least, please continue to attend the Virginia Access Brown Bag Lunch Calls. I guess they used to call them that. I'm not sure if they still call that. But there's a lot of really good information that Karen Tafelsky puts out that is related to all things our world, whether it be services or HR or fiscal or retainer payments. Um, it also, sometimes the advocacy stuff comes up on things that maybe you want to reach out to your General Assembly member about. Um, but they, those are good calls. And then also, via, so those calls got moved to Wednesdays because when, when really the poop was hitting the fan, it was like twice a week. I think it was on like Mondays and Thursdays or something. Now, since the fan quit spinning and the poop quit flying, we're down to one time per week on Wednesdays. Uh, BNPP is continuing to do their calls, at least as of now, on uh, 9 a.m. on um, each Friday. Uh, you can go to their website to find the link. They use Go that's not, go to meeting or something. I don't know. You got to download some software, but it, so far it's been working. Uh, Virginia mm -hmm. Access uses Zoom, which the most hilarious thing for you guys that are on the calls is when somebody's unmuted and they're doing stuff in the background and they can't get uh -huh. them set up. I like one of these days. Uh, it's just hilarious to hear those things go down. So far, we have not been one of the people that are like, yeah. "This call is so boring. I hate this," or whatever. Because there's some people that have said that it's awesome. Yeah. Well, either way, Jennifer's call is, uh, Fedora, the BMPP call is much more rigid and there's not a lot of that. And Karen's call is a little bit of a free for all, which is kind of fun because there's a lot more banter and back and forth about stuff. But either way, please attend the call. Also, uh, do your best to read the Medicaid memos and the licensing stuff. There's a lot of information coming out. Um, I can't process it all. I know, Andy, you're better at that than I am of going through it and focusing. I have too much ADD. I make it be like the first two pages. There's just a lot of stuff it's, that we need to keep up with. It's become my new life is is going through and, and and some of them I print and I read these stacks of stuff and um, there's a lot of stuff. One of the new things that came out, anybody who is a supervisor, um, it d depends is putting out a new supervisor's training module. Um, it's, it'll take about two and a half hours and although they're saying it's for supervisors that were hired after a certain date i think as an agency we're going to put all of our supervisors through it um there's some good material there and you know whenever they make a suggestion about something you know we always can kind of guarantee that it'll become a requirement um so i i, I haven't been able to see the content yet i think it goes live on the first of july 
and you'll go to the uh, DivHeads website and set up an account. They also have some other trainings on there. Um, I've taken a couple of them that are pretty interesting. Um, I put the stuff up on Basecamp, so if you wanted to get up there and set up an account, you could and take a look around, but I think it goes live the 1st of July, and so we'll be sending more information out. So that's anybody who um, is in any line of supervision of direct support professionals. So that could be that I'm an ASC, I'm an SC, I'm a QIDP, you know, whatever my role is, if DSPs fall along my line of supervision. That includes sponsors, if you're in the sponsored world helping sponsors? That, that is a very good point. Um, I, that would probably be a really good idea if you're using relief staff. Um, it couldn't hurt. Um, you know, I don't know if, if as an organization we'll make that a requirement, um, but it probably is a good idea. There's probably some good information in there. So um, it may help with uh, the more uh, drop-ins that we may be having or the more a request for information that we'll be having but there's um it's on base camp uh, under supervisors under that group and you can take a look um and it's got the kind of outline of what the topics are going to be that's going to be covered so um they're pumping out a lot of training right now that's for sure <laughs> so uh so that's us um okay so i guess the next one this would be for people who used to go to an office and now work from home uh now that we've been doing this a while i think we're, we're starting to kind of figure it out what works and what doesn't work um so uh, I don't know, it'd be almost neat to, if we did a call where everybody could say, you know, how have you changed your working from home habits? Did you get a different desk? Uh, did you, yeah, you know, uh, like, like I have a stand-up workstation out in the warehouse so I can be kind of outdoors while I'm working, which is really nice. Um, sitting down long periods of time is really bad. And so getting up and moving around, which is really cool because some of these Zoom calls, you can go on a walk and listen to them. Um, but I, I would recommend everybody that is working from home, uh, Google it. Just go on there and look. There's a lot of really good information, both on YouTube as well as just typical checklists of things that can help you stay focused, uh, stay on a routine, um, interact with others uh, to, to get back to that camaraderie piece. There's like, uh, for example, the lunches and the happy hour that we do. Um, there, there's a lot of really cool stuff out there now that, that the whole world has had to work from home. There's a lot of good information. So if you're finding things, anything about working at home frustrating, I highly recommend you um, just do some Googling and looking around. There's a lot of really cool hacks, especially for people who have kids that won't leave you alone when you're on Zoom calls or whatever. There's some ways to signal to your family that you are not available right now, headsets and things like that. So there's just a lot of good information. So. Um, so speaking of those things, we do are continuing the weekly lunches. This is kind of Andrea's uh, uh, recipe thing, and that seems to be very popular. We've got a lot of people that come and go from the calls. It's a lot of fun. It's a way to kind of, you know, be on Zoom when it's not related to work and not talk work. We can just be people and enjoy each other's company. And so that that's still going on. So hit up Andrea and on her email if you want to be a part of that and join in. You don't even have to cook the food. You can just join in and just have a fun discussion. I think half the people don't even cook the recipe, they just join in, but um, yeah. it's definitely, you know, of, of activities that um, I've added into my life. Um, I had, you know, being that I live by myself, I had been, become the person who picks up prepared food a lot um, from the grocery store. And of course, salad bars are gone and the prepared food bars are gone. And so um, um, it's been kind of fun to try out cooking some new stuff. Um, I was joking, I have like staples in my pantry now you know that i hadn't had so um so it, it's it's an opportunity to be creative and try something new and there's always a meal and a dessert so um so yeah. you can you know satisfy whatever your preference is and then um i guess there's a a cocktail uh hour every uh other thursday and um i haven't been to one um so uh i can't speak to the shenanigans that go on there but uh you know they're they're not probably g-rated and um and uh, so just you know go with a, an open mind <laughs> yeah usually uh sorry some some folks are commenting everybody if you wanted to go to everybody make sure it says uh panelists and all attendees mm -hmm. some of this just goes to andy and i so we gotta reshare yeah. it um so kendra said or we macgyver the recipes that's the other thing that's fun is yeah. to hear people out there like i'm not using this i'm going to do this other yeah. thing and they come up yeah. with stuff but uh karen said she is super productive from 5 a.m until 2 or 3 and then she hits a thinking wall so yeah. that's helpful working from home yeah 
But yeah, the uh, cocktail hours are fun. Uh, usually there's some kind of weird drink that you normally wouldn't make yourself. So you actually have to go out and buy stuff and make stuff and all of that. And so those have been a lot of fun. Um, and we're interested in, I mean, there, there's more that we can do. Um, so we're always, we're always interested in hearing the, again, the K-Day Zoom was so wonderful. It was so great to see everybody. And it was really, you know, so different to have the whole company together on K-Day as opposed to just doing it regionally. Um, and I think bingo was pretty popular. So that's, that's an opportunity for an activity, but, um, you know, there's always fun stuff to do. So we're always open for suggestions. Yep. Uh, the other yeah. Thing, Resurrect uh, book club. Yeah. Ah, yeah, that's, yeah, it's a good idea. Yeah, that's the thing. It's like, that's the one thing that is missing when you work at home is the, the fun interaction with your coworkers. That's the thing. It can't be all about just work and Zoom. It's got to, you know, we, some of us like work because it gives you interactions with people who are not your family and, and it's kind of fun. So um, let me see. Uh, so next one, uh, I guess, please, for those of you who are supervisors of any direct support or, or you know, ASC sponsors, et cetera, please um, kind of keep your eyes open for people that do good stuff and uh, give them an impression in the, in the uh, Paylocity and, and let's keep that going. Cause that's, um, you know, sometimes it's a lot of admin to admin, but I'd really, I know that there's really cool stuff happening out there at the group homes, at the in-home locations and at sponsored homes. So just keep an eye out for that and, and try to call them out on that and give them some props. Um, and I'm always, I'm always looking for Wednesday's Warriors for Facebook. I need somebody for next week for sure. Um, you know, I, I tend to get uh, supervisors and admin folk. And so, um, you know, if you've got direct support professionals out there doing cool stuff, um, all I need is just a couple sentences. I can go from that and the photo. Um, you know, it's something that they're doing that's cool, but also maybe something personal about them that um, that's interesting that you'd like to share. So um, if I don't hear from anybody, I'll be hitting y'all up next week to for next Wednesday. Yep, very cool. I think that's all I had. Andy, did you have anything else you want to get into? Or if anybody on the call has any questions or questions that you've heard milling around, uh, feel free to go in the Q&A box before we turn it off. I think, um, I think that's, I wanted to touch a little bit, uh, maybe on training. Um, I talked about the supervisor training that's coming up. Um, the people who are UCURA trainers, the crisis trainers will be going through recertification and, and we're, um, you know, we're, we're staying up to date on training, although there's some hands-on techniques that we will be um, needing to kind of begin to roll in. And so we'll figure out ways to do that safely. And we've been talking about that. So those of you who, who need to, um, to do those techniques, um, we'll be figuring that out for you. So we are going through an update of the learning platform. Um, there's a newer version. And um, we will be um, rolling that out here shortly. And there'll be some information that comes out because it'll look a little bit different, but it'll be the same information. So we'll, we'll let you know about that. We're also working to get some um, new nurses to contract with um, to do med training so that we can offer that more frequently and be a little bit more versatile with that. Um, hopefully doing that, um, some of it via Zoom. Um, so we've got somebody in Lynchburg who's been through the training. That's actually Karen's mom. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's exciting. And then we've got somebody in Hampton Roads that's going through the training. So, um, so yeah, so we're going to have some more options for that. So, uh, um, but you all have been doing a really good job of staying up to date on stuff. So thank you for that. And I guess that's it. Everybody stay there's, healthy. There's some chatter in the thing. I think it is the revitalizing book club, book club or bringing yeah. it back up. So that's, yes. uh, so I guess uh, I have, I have stacks of books, um, through the quarantine that, uh, I would love to discuss. So, um, yep. so, uh, um, so we do need, I guess that, that's the thing that, that somebody's got to organize it. Somebody's got to launch the Zoom, facilitate the call. I know Andrea is doing the, um, what do you call it, the, the lunch, the lunch thing. Um, I think she would really like it if Jennifer Ansley takes over the, the happy hour and facilitates that call. So maybe a uh, Jean or somebody else that really wants to do the book club, uh, you know, we just need to kind of a figure out a date, time, location, and set it up on Zoom. It does have to be somebody with a pro Zoom account, which they I show you my, not everybody has a pro account, but that allows you to go more than the uh, 45 minutes. Um, oh, Jean says she'll do it. Okay, cool. So awesome. we've got, we got a volunteer. This so is, this um, is my my recommendation, Jean. 
this is my new book. Interesting. So, um, um, big big oh, bestseller that's come out now. So um, so and speaking of which, I, I did have the question that came up um, regarding uh, the governor was talking about um, making today Juneteenth a, a a state holiday. And it hasn't officially been passed yet. He's going to take it before the House in August. Um, and so hopefully by next year, that will be a holiday that's on the books. And I think that that's great. I am so proud of Virginia and our governor for all of the positive steps that he's taking and, and that the state is taking um, with all of the um, racial unrest that's been going on in this country. And, you know, Virginia was a, you know, big hub during the Civil War and um, has got a long history of doing things wrong. And so I'm really proud that we're in a state that's doing things right. And so, um, so I think that, that it's, it's a really cool time to be in Virginia. So, um, so maybe by next year, I know if people had asked about is today a holiday, but um, we, if we made something a holiday without it being official, we wouldn't be able to roll it back. So we need to wait till August to see if it's actually going to officially become a holiday. Right. Um, and also the, uh, obviously the ho holidays, um, the paid holidays are, are quite expensive and, it, and they only mm -hmm. affect people that are full time and it doesn't affect the vast majority of our DSPs. So historically we've really, um, I know me personally, I think Andy agrees, like it, I try to put everything through the filter of, does this raise the wages of the DSPs working mm -hmm. with the customers? And we've, until we can get that higher, um, it's, I just, everything else just seems like it's in the noise. And so it, it's whether it be reducing administrative costs or being more efficient or adopting technology, um, but, the, but the, the DSPs out there and the, the sponsors, people who are actually day-to-day -day working with the customers. Um, and, and when I use the word DSP, I kind of mean anybody that's really working with the customers, whether it be a supervisory position or whatever. So, um, so I don't know. So things like that, it, 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 um, I mean, it's like, I, I, I think I, I want us to celebrate it, but when it comes down to, is it a paid holiday? Um, that probably wouldn't happen just because I would, I would rather use any excess money to go to everyone, not just a, a handful of people that are full-time. To answer that question. Um, um, All right. What else? Yeah, I think, I think that, that's... Yeah, oh, the other thing uh, that I'm really proud of Virginia, like you were talking about the governor and his, his leadership and all of this, but the other thing I'm really proud of Virginia is the, the protests have been peaceful, and I think we're going to make a lot more difference if, if we as Virginians can keep it that way, because now the, con the conversation can stay focused on making progress on these topics and not burning down our cities and stuff. But a lot of the other states have such violence and, and, and anger. And, um, and so I've really been proud of um, our local areas. I know there's some stuff in Lynchburg happening and Norfolk. Uh, Virginia Beach had a little bit of trouble down there. And it's like the later it gets, the more hoodlums come out and start breaking into buildings, just taking advantage of this. But, but by and large, I'm just really proud of Virginia for mm -hmm. safely having this conversation and really making change. I think we get a lot further when we can actually just have an adult conversation versus torching our city. But you look at Manhattan and some of these other places, they have just destroyed their community. And it's really sad to see that. Um, so I don't know one more positive thing about Virginia. Yeah, well, it's a special time and, you know, support services has always been um, really focused on celebrating diversity and um, you know, Kay was such a huge civil rights advocate. And, um, you know, we've always focused on the civil rights of people with disabilities, but that encompasses so many more people. Um, you know, it's, um, you know, different races and genders and gender identification. And, and, and there's so many uh, groups and it's wonderful to see what's going on in the, um, in the states right now. Um, those of you who have been paying attention to the uh, Supreme Court, um, they made some really cool uh, decisions this, uh, this week. And so I was quite impressed with that. So it's a, um, it's a good time. There's, there's a lot of positive thought going that hopefully we're shining some light on the negativity. And, you know, when there's, uh, when there's dark, the light can always shine and get rid of the dark. So um, I think that we're doing that. So it's two shot packs, right? Yeah. Cool. So, all right. Anybody else or will, we will close. We're good. Everybody have a really super safe weekend. I think we're not supposed to get rain. Um, so that would be nice. So get outside. Um, uh, botanical gardens in Norfolk. I took Jean there for her birthday. 
beautiful place to go. So I would recommend. I heard they're letting you go off trail, right? You can huh? get off the trail. I saw something that they, they, they wanted people to be social distancing. So instead of having to stay on the path, I heard that you can basically you can go in, you can go in the grass. Yeah. So um, I think that, uh, that there's a lot of stuff coming open outdoors. I think the zoos are opening. And um, so um, there, there's a lot of stuff to do. So get out there and have some fun. Be safe. And we'll see you in two weeks. Yep. Oh, Two weeks is the 3rd of July. It's our holiday, um, our, our recognition of the 4th of July. So we probably will not be here in two weeks. Ah, okay. Or we can bump so, it. Um, we'll yeah, it. I just sent that out. That's the holiday. So those of you who are off on holidays, it is the 3rd of July this year. So, all right. Take care, everyone.